we can actually get started early. Who knew? Welcome, everyone. Um, very happy to see so many of you. Many of you I'm meeting for the first time, and my team is meeting for the first time. I want to welcome you all to, uh, to Integrate 2019. Uh, we have a jam-packed schedule for the next couple of days, uh, but we thought this year it would be fun to kick it off with the faculty, so that's what we're going to do. Um, we have a couple of presentations for you, but we're going to start with you all. Yeah, if I can get these things to work. All right. There we go. Okay. So we would like to begin this year's conference by connecting you all to each other and getting the conversation started. So what I'm going to ask is for each of you to come up. I'm going to give you a card. They're all the same, so there's no advantage of coming first or last. Uh, and I'd just like you to introduce yourself to, to, to the other folks in the room so that we, as we start this event, uh, we know who else is, is around and hopefully help make some connections. So, um, all right, I'm going to go first. So, and then what I'd like you to do is if you guys can come up and just form a line here and we'll go from there. A couple at a time would be great. So, my name is Chad Mesra. I am from Morgantown now. I sort of adopted the place. Um, not originally. I was, my father was uh, military, and so we moved all over the place. Uh, but I married into West Virginia and uh, been here pretty much ever since. Uh, I have used to teach 610, 613, and 614, among others, uh, which are IMC courses for the undergrad folks that are in the room. Uh, don't do that anymore. Um, the dean was able to take one thing off my plate, and that was it. <laughs> so, and I hired you all. You all are much better instructors. Uh, I've been here for almost 15 years uh, as um, a full-time person working in this role, and prior to that, uh, I've been around. And one funny or interesting thing about me, something that most people in the room might not know, um, I think a lot of you know that I brew beer, so that I'll skip that, but I do. It's like my passion, so. Um, but I will say uh, something else. I've uh, donated bone marrow twice uh, to the same recipient in France, and the French are incredibly bad at follow-up, so I have no idea, but he at least worked the first time. So, all right. Uh, with that, if you all would, uh, please, someone come up and volunteer. Or I'll do like we do in our classes, and I'll start calling on people. <laughs> Great. There you go. Hi, everybody. I'm, oh my gosh, I sound terrible. I'm Stephanie Miklo, and I'm from uh, Oceanside, California, not New York, which is part of San Diego, and I feel very lucky that I get to live in the sunshine, but I'm originally from the Midwest in Iowa, so I love Midwestern values and all that good stuff. I teach uh, 409, 419, and 309. Totally love it. Have been here 10 years, and my PR side says thank you, Chad, and the university for all the great opportunities here. I've taught here 10 years, 2009, yeah, 10 years. Woo. Let's see, a funny or interesting thing. Um, I'm obsessed with knitting and crocheting, like obsessed. Like if I don't get to knit at least five minutes a day, I go insane. But I learned to knit when I was nine. So it's not just for old ladies. Now my kids go, oh, mom, you're such an old lady. So I knit everything. So every time I give a gift, it's knitted or crocheted. And now I'm into knitting little stuffed animals, hopefully for my future grandchildren. My youngest son just got married. I'm like, hello, babies, so I can give my knitted elephants and all that good stuff away. So... That's a little bit about me. Thanks. Hello. Uh, my name is Marty Rotberg. I am from Westchester County, New York, but I'm really a Bostonian, uh, although I lived in New York a very long time. But I still root and uh, watch every single game that any Boston team is involved in. Uh, I teach... Uh, I've been teaching PR 412, which is sport communications, IMC for sport. I am the new lead instructor or lead on sport communications minor. 
And I actually got started here at West Virginia, and I didn't go to school here. I went to school in Boston at Northeastern University in Boston College. I have a dear friend who has a, a connection to the Reed School for many years. He went here, and he made the connection originally about 10 years ago, and I actually spoke at a conference here, I think it's nine or 10 years ago, for sport communications and sport marketing. Something that I, I probably, cycling is something I enjoy and love to do. Uh, on an annual basis, I probably ride 2,500 to 3,000 miles just in the greater vicinity of Westchester and Fairfield County. And I've done some uh, cycling in Tuscany as well, which is uh, quite challenging. It's great to be here. Look forward to meeting you all. Thank you. My name is Philip Sturm. Um, I'm a PhD, and so my students call me Dr. Phil. Um, I'm not offended by that. I don't watch his TV show, and he doesn't watch my classes, so we're, we're, we're pretty even with that. Um, I was born in Tennessee. I grew up in Missouri. I went to school in Kentucky. I worked in North Carolina. I live in Virginia now, so I've kind of traveled around a bit. Uh, I was in brand management the first part of my life for about 20, 25 years, Procter & Gamble, Haynes Corporation, R.J. Reynolds. Yes, tobacco. I made a lot of money selling tobacco, but uh, uh, it's, it may not be right, but it's, it, it pays the bills. Um, I got my degree late in life, about 20 years ago, so I've been a full-time professor for a variety of colleges. I've been in this program for about 10 years. I'm the lead instructor, so if you don't like the text or the discussions or assignments, you can blame me for that. Um, brand Equity Management 613 is the course that I'm in charge of. Um, What's unique about me, one, one of my students know this pretty quickly. I'm an avid fan of the St. Louis Cardinals baseball team. They're winning right now. I had to check before I got here. Uh, they lost last night. They lost the night before, but I'm not going to give up on them. And uh, I'm unabashed about using that as a good example of a brand in my classes. So I, I, they'll see the logo and they'll hear me talk about it several times during the course of the, the class. So. That's a way they can get bonus points if they want to act like they're a fan of the St. Louis Cardinals. Hi, everyone. My name is Karen Freeberg, and I am from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm not originally from Louisville, Kentucky. I actually grew up in California, but I did also a cross-country travel for school. I went to Florida for my undergrad. USC out in California for my master's and in Tennessee for my PhD. Um, I do call myself Dr. Freeberg 2.0 because my mom is the original, so I'm just the social media edition. Um, so the subjects that I've been teaching here in the IMC program um, is IMC 618 PR Concepts and Strategies. So I'm the lead instructor there, and I've been teaching for uh, West Virginia now for 10 years. It'll be 10 years in October, so... WVU is my longest employer. So um, I also teach um, at the University of Louisville. So I teach social media, strategic communication classes. Um, so yeah, it's been great to be part of the program. I really love it. I love the students. I love the faculty and the community we have here. Um, one funny or interesting thing about you. Well, I'm addicted to coffee. Um, it's a major food group. Um, I think we should get sponsored by Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. Um, but one thing that I do share with my students is I had, bef before I went to the professor route, I was a shop putter. So I used to throw things for a living. And so whenever my students Google me, they see my old competition videos and they don't give me any issues because I was a bit competitive. So, <laughs> so that's what I did yeah, before I became a professor. Well, hello, I'm Larry Stoltz, and I teach uh, IMC 615, Creative Strategy and Execution. I grew up in Indiana, and uh, so I'm kind of mid Midwestern, too. But I live in Atlanta, and I've been teaching in Atlanta. I had a design studio in Atlanta and New Orleans for a long time. Been teaching in Atlanta. I've taught at Portfolio Center, the Art Institute, and I've been with this program for 12 years. And I really enjoy that. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of something funny or interesting. Uh, 12 years teaching here is the most interesting thing about me. Um, my wife always comes with me. She's back at the hotel right now, but you need to know that uh, in August, we celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary and went to Nova Scotia for a month. And so you can tell her you know how old she is. Um, <laughs> something funny, I just now learned how to, oh, Rick and I, by the way, are good fly fishing buddies. We need, you need to know that about me and Rick. Um, I learned something last week and I'm gonna start. 
You see this? I bruise really, really easy. A lot of old guys do. I saw it. there's a woman in my church that bruises easy, and she puts on temporary tattoos over the bruise. I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Craig Davis. Um, I'm a professor at Ohio University. I teach advertising classes. I teach strategic communication classes. And um, I have never taught a class here. Matter of fact, I don't even know the number of the class. What is it? 419, yes. So I'm scheduled to teach that in the summer, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, uh, so one funny or interesting thing about me. Uh, I don't know. Can anyone ride a unicycle here? I can, so, and that's fairly funny. Uh, so, yes. So that's it, and I'm looking forward to working with you all. Hi, I'm Whitney Drake. I'm a graduate of the WVU program from 2016. I've been teaching for two years. I teach 433, and I taught 610. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. And one funny thing about me, or interesting, is I just finished my 50th state, which was Mississippi, so I've spent the night in all of the U.S. states. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Fulton. Uh, I'm from Kensington, Maryland. I grew up uh, along the Ohio River in Parkersburg. I went to school here in the dark ages <laughs> 40 years ago <laughs> uh, when I graduated. I came directly to Capitol Hill and worked there 10 years. And then I launched into uh, a PR firm that um, did a lot of lobbying as well as strategic communications and um, other services. Um, and what I do is I spend a lot of time talking about the convergence of strategic communications with government relations and public affairs. So I teach uh, 638 public affairs. I helped design the course uh, about eight years ago, and I've been teaching it since. Uh, I have to give a shout out to Kathy Previs from Eastern Kentucky University. She's not here today, but she texted me right as I arrived in Morgantown, wishing me good luck, asking me to say hello to everyone. Um, she's fantastic, and we developed the course together, taught it together, and are fast friends and, and do a lot of things together. Um, interesting thing about me, um, I love landscaping. So I can go to a garden store, and I can, like, if I overhear people wanting to know how much to water something, does this work in sun or shade, whatever, I love to have fun. I build walls. I've, you know, in, in, our, in our yard, I tear out sections, put in new sections. It's expensive, but it's a lot of fun. It's, my, it's, it's that or um, a, another form of mental health <laughs> uh, services that I'd need. Look forward to getting to know everybody here during the next couple days. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Archie Sater, the lead instructor for the student selected case section of IMC 636, our capstone course. I uh, live in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but I'm originally a New Yorker. I was in the agency business in New York for most of my career, serving primarily uh, companies in the sports marketing, financial services, or publishing industries. Uh, one day, uh, I found myself in a situation where uh, my two daughters finished college. They both got married. I didn't need the big bucks anymore. I saw this ad for a full-time faculty position at WVU, and I did nothing with it for a couple, of, a couple of months, actually. I finally had the nerve to show it to my wife, and she said, oh, go for it. You have nothing to lose. And a month later, I got the job, and she started crying. She said, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> but we came to W. We came to West Virginia. We moved here full time. I was uh, on the faculty and administrative work for the university for about five years. And uh, I can honestly say that the, the, my first year on the job here, uh, I had a terrible day at the office. I forget exactly what, what, what bothered me, but it was a terrible, terrible day. I came home at night. And I said, you know, we've got to get out of here. My wife said, well, if you're going, you're going yourself, because I love it here. <laughs> and that was the truth. We really loved life in Morgantown, had a wonderful five years here, uh, and uh, uh, moved away. And now I resume teaching on an adjunct basis. So Archie admitted me into the IMC program, so I'm hoping that the day I applied wasn't that day he was just talking about. <laughs> but it may have been. 
Uh, Matthew Cummings. I am from Erie, Pennsylvania, about three hours north of here. I teach IMC 610. I'm the lead instructor right now for IMC 610. So Archie and I are the bookends uh, of the IMC program. I have taught for WVU for 13 years. Um, Chad hired me in 2006. Um, so this is my going on my 13th year. And one funny or interesting thing about me, many of you have three college degrees. You have a bachelor's, master's, and doctorate. I also have three college degrees, bachelor's, master's, and I also graduated from clown college. <laughs> True story, I have a diploma to prove it. And I can jungle. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nicole Beeson. Uh, I teach PR uh, 438 um, event execution, and in the fall I'll be teaching um, intro to event planning PR 436. Um, I've been teaching since 2015, and I used to work for the IMC program for seven years, and Matthew was my um, IMC 610 professor, and I'm also an alum, as is Matthew. Um, and something funny or interesting, um, I was a cheer coach and tumbling instructor for um, 12 years. Hello, I, I'm Dave Merrill, and I was born in Waterloo, Iowa, but I'm part of the Michigan contingent here, which is one of the larger ones outside of West Virginia. I think there's five of us here. I'm from a suburb of Detroit. Um, I uh, have been teaching here for about eight years. I started teaching um, direct marketing, IMC 616, with uh, Susan Jones when it was a required course. And then I uh, migrated on uh, the last, uh, I'd say, about five years to the um, capstone course campaign, 636. Um, something um, interesting about me, I guess, um, how did I get to Detroit um, from uh, Iowa? Well, I like cars. I've always liked cars. So I set my goal um, to work for uh, one of the automakers in Detroit. And so out of grad school, I ended up working at uh, Ford, and uh, another interesting fact, my favorite car um, is a car many of you probably haven't, or a number of you haven't heard of. It's a Packard, and I have um, a 1956 Packard Caribbean convertible, one of uh, about 100 that are left. So looking forward to meeting you and uh, happy to be here. Hi, everybody. My name is Bill Nevin. I uh, live here in Morgantown. I uh, originally grew up in the Midwest, went to school at Southern Illinois University, where I uh, received my undergraduate degree in radio television, and I worked uh, on the radio for almost 20 years, and that's what kind of brought me to West Virginia back in 1990. Uh, worked several years on the radio here before I went and worked for the university in their primary media relations, public relations arm. Uh, was in the first cohort of students after WVU adopted the IMC program back in 2003, uh, along with uh, Stacy, and I think Matthew was in that first class as well, and graduated in 2006 and started teaching in 2007. So this is my 12th year of teaching, and I teach the introductory course, which is IMC uh, 610. Interesting thing about me, nothing against you, Phil, but I am a huge Cubs fan and uh, never miss a game. I have the MLB package, and as a matter of fact, uh, the Cubs are in St. Louis for a three-game series this weekend, so we'll see who, see, who, see who wins. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Marty Machowski. Uh, I'm here from, the, from Falls Church, Virginia, which is in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, I'm, by the way, I am a Mets fan, so we can have a little conclave after this. Um, uh, like Mike Fulton, I started my career working on Capitol Hill, did a short stint in local government, and since about 1980 or 1991, I've worked for a variety of PR firms, uh, big firms like Edelman and small firms like 90 Degree Communications, which is my own shop. Um, uh, this is past semester has been my was my first semester teaching here. It was an interesting and learning experience for me as well, and I, I hope to learn some more. I uh, taught 
uh, 693, which is executive communications, which I understand and is now part of the PR focal program that uh, Frank will be managing. Um, uh, the most interesting thing about me is that when I was an undergraduate, I went to Queens College at the City University of New York. I drove a cab for five years in New York City to support myself. Everything that you imagine happens in the back of a New York City cab does happen in the back of a New York City cab. That I can assure you. <laughs> Thanks. I look forward to talking to Holly. Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Jones. Um, I am from Pittsburgh, and in fact, our family's land grant farm from the 1700s is in Washington, PA. The name was Daig, D A G U E, and it's on Daig Hollow Road. So I love going back there when we're in this area. We don't own the farm anymore, but it's still there. Bill and I, Bill will be right after me, live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I've just finished my 29th year at Ferris State University as a professor of marketing. I've been with West Virginia now 11 years, and I think I came to my first Integrate 10 years ago. So uh, I teach IMC 616, which has a brand new name, Direct and Digital Marketing. We're moving with the times as we should. And an interesting thing about me and Bill is we have five grandchildren. We got them all within four years' time. They're eight, six, five, five, and four. Doobie, doobie, doo. I've always wanted to do that. I'm Bill Jones. My friends refer to me as Mr. Susan. My career has been in sales, marketing, um, manufacturing. I had a, uh, an engineering and a build firm for a while. <clears throat> I'm originally from Youngstown, Ohio. Coming out of high school, I drew a circle with about a 300-mile radius and decided any university outside of that was okay, so I left. I teach the B2B marketing, and I teach sales and sales promotion. Okay. I've been teaching for about eight years, and I have three hobbies that may or may not be interesting. I enjoy model railroading. I play trumpet. And I also do uh, landscapes and oils. So, very nice seeing everybody. Thank you. Hello, my name is Patrick Warner. This, I'll be teaching IMC 622 Multicultural Marketing uh, for the first time in October. Uh, I currently work with the Nielsen TV ratings, been with them for over seven years. Uh, my daughter recently graduated in public health from West Virginia last May. Um, so I was really excited about that. Um, I'm just glad to be here. Uh, a funny thing about myself, years ago, my high school days, I was a little football player. I got a one letter from West Virginia University, which never materialized. <laughs> so, so fast forward, 2013, my daughter announces she wants to go to WVU. So I guess, you know, that prophecy finally materialized. <laughs> so anyway. Um, th the funny thing would happen, back I was at homecoming at Eastern Michigan University. They just started an uh, a IMC program that was headed by Archie. I applied for it. They had a big ad in the alumni magazine. I applied for it. I called up Archie. Archie was like, well, Patrick, you're in a bubble, but we're going to let you in. You know, we'll see what you can do. I eventually got my master's at Eastern Michigan University. And... Uh, Somehow, some way, I ended up landing here teaching the course. So I, I guess WVU is home for me also. Hi, everyone. My name is Stacy Creeley. Um, I am a graduate of the program with Matthew and Bill, but I was a lot smarter than them. <laughs> um, and in 2005, Chad hired me to uh, become an instructor. So I teach IMC 610. I've also dabbled in creative strategies, but mostly I teach IMC 610, and I was Archie's student. He'll tell you that I was smarter. Um, during my day job, I am the director of communications for a private school in Wheeling, West Virginia. So I am a mountaineer. I am also a Lindsley cadet. I'm a mom of a gorgeous little sassy 12-year-old girl who is blonde. I'm still working on figuring that out. And something funny or interesting about me, I would say that I have been a mountaineer all my life. 
My very earliest memories, my dad plays the guitar, and I remember sitting on the front porch, he would strum the guitar and sing Country Roads. So um, that's me. Ooh, sorry. Hi, I'm Mark Tebow. Um, where am I from? Currently Boynton Beach, which is about halfway between Boca and West Palm. So, uh, but, or, but I've had many segues be before that, and I spent 12 years in North Carolina. And uh, what subjects I teach are IMC 642, which is Web Metrics, SEO, and I love that course. And I also teach when it's offered IMC 629. I have a certificate from this program, so I don't have the masters. And the only teacher that was here when I was here is Matthew, the first teacher I had. All the others are gone, but I had a great six courses. So I was thinking about it, and actually I've been teaching here six years. I didn't realize that until 2013 is when I started. So. Uh, so, one funny or interesting thing. Well, hmm, I don't know if it's funny or interesting, but when I went to IIT, I was the number one player on the golf team. Not that that was much of an accomplishment back then, but I was. Good afternoon, my name is Matthew Miller. I am originally from Cleveland, Ohio, and left, and then moved back to Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I am currently the Dean of Enrollment for a small college called the North Coast College. Um, my hope is, is the next time I'm here, or sometime over the next five years, you will all have heard of us by then. Uh, prior to that, I spent 10 years at the University of Virginia, and also worked at the University of Charleston for a couple years, and Tulane University until a little storm blew us into Charlottesville. Um, I have uh, three kids, none of which are with me this weekend, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, my wife asked if she could tag along. I said, absolutely. I'm not sure how much I'll see you. She said, that's perfect. Um, so she's looking forward to a quiet weekend as well, exploring Morgantown. I have taught uh, two courses in the undergraduate program online, entertainment branding and event planning, and I'll be teaching entertainment branding uh, this upcoming fall. So this fall will be my, the start of my second year. I also teach uh, principles of marketing and Somehow teaching math classes for a guy who never took math in college. Uh, I am teaching math at my current employer as well. One funnier, interesting thing about me, um, I somehow broke my toe last night unloading groceries. Uh, you'd be surprised how heavy a two liter of, of uh, Canada Dry ginger ale can be when it falls out of your refrigerator. So if you see me hobbling, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm taking lots of pain reliever and I'll be enjoying the weekend, uh, but that's why I'm hobbling around. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Adrienne King. Um, I am in Toledo, Ohio, where I, um, for my day job, I oversee marketing communications for the University of Toledo and the University of Toledo Medical Center. Um, I am originally from West Virginia. Um, my, I am also a 2006 graduate of the IMC program. I continued on and got my doctorate degree here at uh, West Virginia. And about a year ago, Chad called me up and recruited me to help develop the higher ed um, class, and I taught that for the first time this spring. Um, something funny or interesting about me, um, I have an undergraduate degree in graphic design and studio art, and my dad is quite pleased that 15 years later I am employed and able to pay my own bills, but I do still paint. Um, I am an avid oil painter on the side. Hi, I'm Kristen Meeks I'm from Parkersburg, and it's, I'm glad to see the Mid-Ohio Valley is well represented here. Most of the time when I travel the state, it's not, so it's really great to be represented here today. Um, I graduated from the program in 2007, and when Chad um, and Rick interviewed me, they said I was an old um, alumni, which I tried not to take too personally with that. So I'm glad to be back here. Started with 610. Um, currently, during the conference, I'm teaching 621, so you'll probably see some of the students. We're a small but mighty group um, over here at 8 a.m., if you guys are around. And then I've been teaching content marketing, because that's pretty much what I do in, in my day job every day. Um, for the last 10 years, I um, have been running a marketing company and I'm doing digital marketing for clients all the United States and launched a online training program as well. A little known fact about me is uh, my background is actually higher education. So I love like looking around and seeing all the stuff that's going on in higher education. And actually before I left, um, we actually um, 
launched the first social media marketing at a college, which used to be a really big deal when you would tell people that. And now they're like, well, why didn't they have it? Like, because it didn't exist, you know, 10 years ago. So thank you. Hi, I'm David Hazelton. I am from Washington, D.C., originally from Los Angeles. Uh, in D.C., I'm the design director for a financial services company. And I've been teaching here, I'm just about to start my second year. I started last year. I teach IMC 610, the introduction. And uh, one interesting fact about me that probably nobody knows, I hope nobody knows, is that when I was in L.A., I did dabble in stand-up comedy. Luckily, it was before the YouTube era, and all of those VHS tapes have since disintegrated. So. <laughs> That about you. Ooh, I got something new about you. No. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cindy Greenglass, and I am from originally Toronto, Canada. I'm a Canuck. Um, moved to Chicago in the 80s, and I call Chicago home. Um, I am a data geek. I love data, and my company does database marketing and analytics um, around performance-based marketing, what could be called direct marketing, could be called direct and digital marketing. We call performance-based marketing. I am an IMC grad, graduated in 2013, and then taught um, data marketing communications as an elective in 13, and then we had the good fortune of connecting with Chad and the administration to launch the DMC program. So I teach the introductory class for the DMC program, and I also now teach the capstone for the DMC program. It's really fun to have the bookended and see the students at the beginning and the end. Um, there's a lot of funny things about me, gosh. Um, after a couple of cocktails, I might tell you a few, but um, probably not surprising to people to know I was a competitive synchro swimmer and competed for Canada. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy Mezzera. So when Chad mentions that he married into the club, that would be me that's responsible. We met as undergrads here. So I've been here in Morgantown for the last 14 years, teaching a variety of undergraduate classes in advertising and public relations. I teach online in the summers, also in those areas as well. So an interesting fact about both of us that perhaps you didn't know, Chad and I actively support something called Operation Paperback. And it's an organization that collects gently used books and that they're sent across the U.S. and even internationally to troops and their families deployed. And it's something that they can go online and request certain reading material or you can just send material to them. So the interesting fact is we've been doing this the last several years and we have an entire bedroom in our house that's nothing but used books. So whenever we have a little bit of extra time, we can go into the bedroom and find a couple of books and ship a couple of shipments. So that's something perhaps you didn't know. Hi, my name's Natalie Eddy, and I live in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, which is just right across the state line, going north. Um, I've been teaching for 15 years here at WVU. I also teach at uh, the Southern New Hampshire University online, and uh, I'm the lead instructor for the PR minor. Uh, an interesting thing, I guess, is that I play the piano, and uh, I do that for relaxation, not in front of anybody. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Frank Mara. I'm a native of Syracuse, New York, currently living in Rochester, the home of uh, Kodak and Paychex and Wegmans Food Markets, probably the greatest food market grocery store in the country, a lot of people think. Uh, I teach applied public relations and crisis communication. I've been here at WVU for about four or five years. Uh, like Karen, I am a graduate of the University of Florida. And I also have a connection uh, with Canada. Cindy mentioned uh, I did my bachelor's degree in uh, Ottawa, Carleton University. I have also had the uh, uh, the experience I taught in Australia for three years and I taught in the Middle East in Abu Dhabi and uh, Dubai for three years uh, teaching Arabic women. Thank you. Hello. Ooh, hello. Too close. <laughs> my name is Leonardo Morejon. If you can't say my last name, that's perfectly fine. Call me Leo. If you call me Leonardo, I probably won't respond. And uh, I'm from New Jersey originally, but right now I actually live in Denver, Colorado. Been living there for the past six months. It's been really cool. 
I changed the ski. It's been fun. So I teach social media strategy, and this is actually my last semester was my first time ever teaching. It was fantastic. I love it. I can't wait to do it again. Uh, one funny thing. Who's seen the Jersey Shore here? Like the TV show, the Jersey Shore? All right? I used to have hair like that. <laughs> and they actually gave me a job at JWT like that. I don't know how. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nathan Perrot. Um, I am from Dallas, Texas. I teach uh, creative strategy, uh, 615 and 625. I currently work as a group creative director for Epsilon, uh, agency there in Dallas. Um, let's see, I have, uh, I have an MFA from Savannah College of Art and Design and Graphic Design, and I'm a graduate, proud graduate of this program. Uh, I think it was 2012. I have a, the master's in Integrated marketing. Um, I've taught for a couple years now, and one funny or interesting thing, I have an identical twin brother, and I have four daughters, and they get us mixed up, even now. <laughs> so, there you go. All right, thanks everyone. So, the thing that always impresses me when we get a bunch of instructors in the same room is just the breadth of experience and talent and it's it's really mind-boggling actually um there this represents roughly one quarter of our entire instructional group uh we have faculty in i just did the count it's like 27 states and uh and and a, and a one international and uh it, it's it's been a really great thing to see this program and other programs, you know, IMC, DMC, and the undergraduate programs at the college grow over the, over the years. Um, I have the absolute pleasure of us being ahead of schedule. So <laughs> I'm, I'm padding, but if y'all would like to take a break, uh, we could do that as well. No? Great. So, um, so I can tell stories. Let me make sure I stay on time. Um, so, quickly, just what, what are y'all looking forward to most about this conference? What, what, what event, what speaker, what, what aspect of it? Why, why are you excited to be here? I'll take the first three. Susan. Yeah, it's, it's something that, you know, when you get amazingly talented and passionate people together, just things start happening. And, and, and this event, while my team would uh, probably tell you is a sort of, we have a love-hate relationship with Integrate because it, it takes a lot of planning. I was actually thinking about it earlier. I was walking up the hill this morning. I met Dan at 7 o'clock at Sam's Club to buy a bunch of 20 cases of water specifically. And uh, I'm walking up the hill and I'm just exhausted. And I'm like, man, Integrate is like exercising before you exercise. <laughs> like, like, we haven't even started yet. But, but I, I think that the, the, the value of the event and, and, and the, the relationships that come out of it are what makes it worthwhile. And, and I'm really pleased that we've been supported by our administration to continue to offer this and do this each year so that we can we can see you guys because otherwise y'all are hundreds and thousands of miles apart. And, uh, and for this weekend, we get a chance to, to actually spend some time together. So I'm really excited about that. 
and I'm really excited that it's here because there is no life until Integrate is done. <laughs> so, from for summer at least. So, all right. Well, I have some. We're still, Rick. Do you think that uh, how many people do we have live? Should probably wait another five minutes or so because we did give them a time. Um, so I will say, so I, I tell jokes while I'm waiting. So uh, we asked you guys, uh, hopefully you saw the link, uh, for to give us topics or things that you wanted us to cover. And I got a grand total of zero responses. <laughs> so you all left this all up to me. <laughs> so, so maybe next time. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot today. Uh, it's the first hour especially is going to be uh, an update about the programs, where we are, uh, and, and really I, I want to continue to be transparent with the instructors. Um, many of you have noted changes in course op opportunities and, and that, and I, and I want to explain sort of what's going on, what we're doing, and, and, and actually most importantly at this point what we need from, from the people in this room and the people that teach in this program. So, um, are there any questions? Anything that I can answer while we have a couple of minutes? You have my undivided attention. No. Yes, Marty. This may be too broad a question at the, at the outset, but do you think we can cover at some point if that relates to engaging students more so in the future than we have maybe in the past? That, that is a great question and one that I could spend probably an hour on. Uh, but but I, I will say that there's, there's available technology that you'll see later today and that, will, that you can use in your classes or things that we have only started to, to roll out. And, and, and we have um, Cindy Hart is now uh, with our program, she's director of our online programs, and she will be able to work with each of you to, to address the questions. How do you engage students? in a way that's comfortable for you. So the, the, the question is always, you don't want to force a single solution because doing that doesn't work for the faculty or the students. And so we want to figure out what you feel, what you feel the opportunity is in your course and, and look at what's available to us to, to basically bridge the gap there. I'll tell you that, that undergraduate students are far less engaged as a general rule than graduate students. Uh, which is, um, you know, is, is a challenge. It's a special challenge for faculty. So the more engaged you are, as an un especially those that teach undergraduate, um, undergraduate courses, the more engaged you are, the more accessible you are, and really the more responsive. I think you, you can get through to those that you can get through to. Uh, and and uh, at the graduate level, it's a little bit, little bit easier because they tend to be a little more self-motivated. Uh, but again, that, that, that high level of responsiveness and using the tools that are available in a way that, that doesn't feel like work for the students is sort of how I would answer that question. I hope it's a good answer. All right. I noticed something about this room. The clock apparently goes to sleep, so I have no idea what time it is. All right, good. Time for one more question. I love that faculty are just like students. Like, there's nobody here in the front. <laughs> so, all right. All right. Well, as we get started, yes, Marty. Another great question. Um, so I could go the competitive research route and talk about those that we know are, are competing with us directly in our space. Uh, but I would answer the question actually a little differently. What I think has made this program so, so successful to date has been the ability and willingness to sort of reinvent itself in ways that make sense to the industry and to the, and to the students. And so 
The DMC program is a perfect example. We didn't start with an existing curriculum. We didn't model it after other programs. We, we went to the industry and asked them what they needed. You know, where was the talent gap? What did they want to hire? And we had a list and we came back and we basically created a curriculum to deliver on that, on that set of, of skills that we knew that needed to be, be addressed. I, I think that I'd like to be unique because I think we can be. We have a model that can be scaled successfully, with high level of student success. We'll talk about it here in, in a second. Um, but there are really good, and it's a really highly competitive field. There's a lot of programs out there that are really, really good. And so I, I think it comes down to delivering on what we want for our students, what we can deliver best for our students, and hope that they make the decision to, to come with, to us versus our competitors. So, great question. Cindy. <laughs> Integrate? Well, I wanna be standing on Saturday night. <laughs> you know? No. Um, Honestly, it, it is incredibly important now for us to sort of marshal our resources, find our thought leaders, and leverage what we, what we already have in front of us, both with the faculty and with the graduates, and integrate as a perfect opportunity to have those conversations to figure out what, what will matter, what will work. So that's what I want to get out of it, a, a to-do list for my team. <laughs> so. They love that. We have a meeting Monday morning. <laughs> All right. I think with that, are we, are we good to go? All right. So, so welcome. Uh, again, thank you for joining us here at Integrate. We have folks also that are watching via webcast. And uh, this meeting will be archived as well for, for later viewing. I've got a lot of content to go through, but at the end of the meeting, I'm hoping to have some time for discussion. So I'm going to go a little quickly through. If you do have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, but my goal is to, to run through the first set of slides pretty quickly. Um, I need a volunteer. Thank you, Whitney. You get bonus points. So. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do while we had you all here, especially when, you know, I'm talking about lots of stuff, um, we'd like you to just start sharing some of your insights. And, and what we did is we put together a one-page handout, it's like your in-class participation. You can use it or go online to a form. But we'd like your insights on a key prompt that we will probably make a little more sense in a little bit. But uh, so as Whitney passes that out, I will move forward. So we're going to talk really about three things. Uh, I'm going to give you an overview on the current state of the Reed College of Media online programs at both the graduate and undergraduate levels. We'll talk a little bit about where we're planning to head in the next year and beyond, and then talk more about the roles of instructors in our model, and then hopefully have some time for discussion. All right, I like starting every meeting, we do this often as well with our own team, uh, to review the things that we believe are critical for online student success and engagement. And it's something that my team came up with in a retreat, I don't know, three, four years ago now, that we have committed ourselves to, and I, I think it's an important thing for the faculty to understand. So there really are seven things that we believe are, are, are critical for online students. One is customer service. We operate with a very customer first orientation here. Uh, our instructors in critically have to build relationships and engage with students. Uh, content of our courses has to be up to date and relevant. Technology has to be reliable. Even when it isn't, we have to make it work. Community is critical, and that's really what Integrate provides, is, is an opportunity for us to build a professional community and engage with people in a face-to-face -face environment. 
recognition, uh, both of the, the value of the degree and the students and faculty that are involved, and evolution, which is probably, probably one of our most definable characteristics. Um, currently, today, I'm so pleased to introduce a very full and talented online programs team. We have, uh, we have, well, I guess you can count them, um, 10 people that work daily on these programs in support of them and our students and our faculty. Uh, and I added Aaron as well. Many of you uh, directly work with him. He's, he used to be on our team. Now he is actually in the online or in the uh, college's uh, advising group, which is also appropriate. He sort of walks between both worlds, but didn't want to leave him off even though I didn't have a good picture of him. Currently, we have 103 active online instructors. Uh, 50 at the graduate level and uh, 53 at the undergraduate and you know you'll see many familiar pictures of people in this room our college has two online master's degrees one in data marketing communications the other in integrated marketing communications seven graduate certificates in areas of emphases these are all brand new uh, actually none of them have officially launched yet they will in fall uh, very excited about what that will allow us to do in terms of specialization and focusing student uh, education. One of the, the answers to Marty's questions is really, uh, there's a lot of differentiation in higher education, a lot of very specific and niche programs, and that's a direction that we believed we, we had both the talent and the ability to go. So uh, we also, yes, Dave. So currently, the, the graduate certificates are five courses. They're IMC 610 plus the four that are required by the areas of emphasis. And the AOEs are for students who are admitted to the master's program. And they basically take, they already have to take three elective courses. Uh, they just take a fourth elective course and they can get the certification. So, but it's prescriptive. Uh, we also have seven online undergraduate minors, fully online minors, um, and an undergraduate major in multidisciplinary studies, which is essentially uh, a student's ability to define their own degree and course of study by taking three minors and packaging them into a major course of study and then synthesizing that through a capstone experience. And in development, I'm very excited to announce that we are working with the College of Business and, Edu and uh, Economics to develop a fully online integrated marketing communications undergraduate major with a goal of launching in fall 2020. Uh, and uh, yeah, new project. <laughs> so, yes, sir. It will be shared. So there will actually be a shared um, faculty position that will be essentially the coordinator. We, at this time, it looks like we'll manage our courses and they'll manage theirs, but there'll be some, some work between the two, the two colleges to ensure that there's consistency of the courses. So it's a pretty exciting thing because, um, you know, first off, working with another college is, is always a, a special challenge. It's got great positives and, 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 and other challenges. <laughs> so. Uh, but, but I think that the opportunity here is for us to do a couple of things. One, capitalize on our existing, our existing infrastructure, launch a fully online degree, open up new markets for us to recruit, and, and a, it's, it's a logical pipeline into our IMC master's program. So a lot of potential opportunity there. It's been in development for a long time, but we're finally to the point where we have agreement between the colleges. So a little bit about enrollment. On the positive side, undergraduate enrollment is up across the whole thing. Every one of the minors is currently up. And this is uh, basically because we changed some things internally and opened up access to, to undergraduate students. So this is our, our really, our, our success story for the last year. Not so great is our graduate enrollment. And this is our year over year from the very beginning 
of enrolled students in our intro courses. This is IMC 610, 510, and the 660 DMC course, which is that introductory course. Uh, obviously, the trend line is something that is not, uh, not a particularly exciting thing, but it's an opportunity for us, and it really does sort of direct us to some of the conversation that we're going to have as we move forward. On the positive, our students are awesome. Our current graduate students, uh, we have 309 current graduate students, which is still a, a lot of graduate students. Um, their average age has actually gone up, despite the fact that we've seen an increase in undergraduate, directly out of undergraduate recruitment, but it's 29 and a half years, six and, a little over six and six years of professional experience, and they continue to come from all over. Our early spring IMC snapshot, so again, drilling down a little bit more, continues to trend very heavily female. Um, you know, we had, uh, you know, pretty good out-of-state representation. That's a little lower than it usually is, but, um, but that's, you know, changing, changing things, more informational than it is useful. Uh, DMC is a little different. This class actually is more female than any other class had been. So maybe the messaging is resonating, maybe it's just a fluke, but I think that, um, that we're seeing more movement on the DMC side. Still heavily experienced. The DMC program attracts far more experienced people on average. And uh, currently, as of today, we have 1,395 graduates of our IMC and DMC programs. Uh, and that's, that's pretty amazing when you consider that I, I think yesterday I was, I was in a meeting with uh, Marianne and, and Diana, and I think there's only been 7,000 in the college in its history. So we've rep highly represented uh, in, in, uh, in our graduate group. Also positive are the, the, ex the experiences of our students. And I, I, we polled the IMC students. But our model is utilized within every one of our courses, both grad and undergrad. And I will say that we, we have a reputation on campus uh, and among the students as being very together, very student-oriented. And, and, and this, is, this is sort of, I just want to share a couple of metrics from you. A 98.3% net promoter score in the last alumni success survey, which went out to every graduate of the program, uh, from the beginning to, to the, I guess it was December. And the, and the impact that the degree has is, is telling. I won't read the statistics to you, but, but this, is, this is really, actually, we'll go to the next slide because a couple of comments. We have pages and pages of this kind of feedback, and, and I, I want you all to see it. I, I shared it. I don't know if, if you all read it, but the, the report went out last year in the dashboard. But I think sometimes it's important for us as faculty to read what the students are saying, what the, what the graduates are saying, that the impact that the degree had. And so I just wanted to spend a moment to say, those students that we get in our programs and that we, that we get through our courses are highly satisfied. Uh, and, and that's something that I think is a reflection of your passion and your dedication to what you're doing. And I just really, I really think this is something that does set us apart from a lot of programs because I know that our dedication to the students is, is really high and it, it has been unwavering. So as we move into the next chapter, the next year, uh, I wanna talk uh, about a few things. One, I wanna reiterate the focus on quality. And, and really explain maybe some of the things that you're going to be seeing or have already started to see uh, in terms of development and course management. I wanna talk about enroll, or the enrollment challenges and address it head on because it's, it's something that um, you know, does impact us and, and, and we have opportunities to figure out how to recruit or re-energize our current programs, develop new programs or eventually things will, will, will change. And, and you know, change is inevitable, but I'm hoping that as, as a group, uh, you all will give us some ideas and, and help us move into the next 
the next round, and then what we need from you. So, a little bit about curriculum and courses. Course quality is and continues to be a key priority for us. We have over 90 unique online courses in this program, or in all of our programs, which is a, a management nightmare. Um, but for the most part, they're, they're in good shape because of the efforts of the instructors that teach it, the feedback that you give from us, and our ability to, to make these changes as rapidly as, as we can. We also, as I, I mentioned Cindy earlier, and you'll, you'll see a lot from her in a little bit, and I hope those of you that haven't met her make it a point. She's going to help coordinate a lot of these efforts. And, uh, and yeah, we, we really need to keep these courses up to date and relevant and impactful for the students that, that take them. That's what they are paying for. That's what they, why they're here. We're a practitioner's program. Even at the undergraduate level, we focus on the impact to the career and the practice. And so all of our courses have an, a responsibility to stay up with what's happening in the industry, which continues to change on us, as we all know. So sort of a great, uh, great challenge. Our curriculum management philosophy continues to be the same. We want you all to be involved. We want there to be a process that we work through regularly so that there so that we don't miss things. We want to use what you all tell us and what we hear from the students and what we see from the industry uh, to keep, keep our courses improved. We also uh, have expanded, as you know, earlier this year we expanded the lead instructor model. Um, the lead instructor model for those that, uh, that, that are relatively new, uh, in IMC we had lead instructors on each of the core courses and the, the logic behind that was to have a central person who would be able to work with everyone else who taught those courses to keep them up to date. We just recently expanded the lead role to include the AOEs and the undergraduate minors. And, and the reason that there is that the minors were created as a set, as a set of, of courses, but the AOEs were not. The AOEs were developed as electives, independent electives. And so we thought that we needed to have somebody who could help synthesize and keep these courses both unique and relevant as we, as we moved forward. Big challenge, as always, communication. I think that, that uh, making sure that there is an open line of communication between the leads and the other instructors, as well as a sort of a formula for how we're going to complete this on, on a timeline. So um, hopefully this is, all, this is all clear, but we will be, uh, for the AOE sequences and the undergraduate sequences, they're kind of a priority right now. This summer, the, minor, the minors are in development with the leads for the first time, as are the AOEs. So you probably, if you haven't, if you teach a course in one of those sequences, you'll probably be engaged. Uh, soon, if not already. And I almost, I, I almost didn't put this slide on because it's like, you guys can't read it, but, but this is our AOE people uh, and our, our, our leads uh, for, uh, for all of our, our sequences. And so, I don't know, a lot of great talent. All right, how am I doing on time? Oh, great. I can talk forever. All right. So enrollment is a challenge. And, and as I, for those that were in the, the meeting, the big meetings, we've had uh, an undergraduate meeting and a graduate meeting in the, in the spring, and then the meeting last fall. Um, it's, it's been a known issue. I, I won't go too, too, too far into the things that we've already covered, but I do wanna reiterate that graduate enrollment is in decline. This year was 12% down again uh, from the last year. So we have, you, you saw the chart. Uh, it's, it's a trend that is obviously alarming uh, to many of us, but our recruitment efforts, while dedicated, and I think improving again, um, have not kept pace with graduation. So as we've graduated the large classes that we recruited in 2016, 17, and early 18, uh, we have not replaced them. And 
that has has been uh, you know been been noticeable in in course offers. Uh, DMC enrollment has not been sufficient to run a complete cohort yet, uh, and and that's so what we what we do is we admit fall and spring, put the two groups together, run them through their core classes, and then then graduate them in small classes. Undergraduate enrollment has increased slightly. Um, it's primarily based on our dropping of restriction that had kept students from taking those courses in the fall and the spring because of a lot of things you probably don't care about. But ultimately, when we dropped that, the number of enrolled minors shot up, as did our, as did our offerings of courses there. But what didn't was summer. And we sort of played a gamble there because we thought, well, more students means more will just have to take courses in the summer because there's, you know, right? Logical? Yeah, no, they don't want to take cl classes in the summer, even though they're shorter and, and, and they can use them to accelerate or catch up. Uh, it's just not appealing to today's undergraduate student. Yes, Susan? Absolutely. Financial aid is a big is a big part of it, and, and and but but if you talk to the students, many of them are are somewhat deaf to the financial part. You know, it's the parents that really deal with the financials. They just don't want to do it anyway. That, that's the students tend to tell us, well, no, I want to work over the summer, or I want to go to the beach, and, and and I understand that. I mean, that's summer classes are 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 tough. They're actually tougher than they are during the fall and the spring because they're accelerated. So, and some students, especially the ones that struggle already, maybe shouldn't be in a summer class. But um, I don't know that there's a solution until other things out of our control really come together with that. Um, but I do think where we do have potential is in the new undergraduate IMC major. And that may not, may not bring summer back but at least it'll help, I hope, stabilize undergraduate year round. Yes, Rick. Joe Barnes asked, how will you reduce the burden on undergraduates who are grad program and over time? Thanks for the question, Joe. Hope you're well. Um, exceptional. Our, our undergraduate recruitment from WVU is our, is our largest pipeline by far. Uh, we have a substantial number of students that come out of our programs and go immediately into IMC uh, or take a few years off and come back. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a positive. Uh, we also have been, yeah, Mike. Yeah, that's, that's a great, that's a great question. So I, I have a little bit of time. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so the question was, the question was, uh, we did integrate in 2017 in Huntington uh, at, at the campus of Marshall University, who is, for those of you that are aware of in-state uh, academic rivalries, is, is sort of like, you know, it's, it's, it's not always a friendly situation when our, when our teams hit the field at the same time. But it, it, it's the other major state institution in West Virginia. And we, for years, were not recruiting well out of Marshall. And we didn't really understand why, because they didn't have a competing program, and their students are mostly in state as well. And so we went down there. It was a funny story. I do have a little bit, of, little couple of minutes, so I'll just tell a story. So the team and I were down in Charlotte at NASCAR doing uh, an event. And on the way back, I think everyone was like, oh, good, we get to sleep in tomorrow. I'm like, no. We had an event in Charleston uh, that evening, and I'm like, what can we do during the morning? And, and um, we had a contact with a faculty member at Marshall, so I just picked up the phone and said, hey, we'd like to come just see what you guys are doing down there. Just stop by. It's like super awkward. <laughs> so so here, here's a group of, of West Virginia employees uh, show up at Marshall, and, and we're standing in the lobby, and I think a couple of us even had to fly in WV on, which is like a crime down there. And, uh, and, and they came out, and at first it was, it was a faculty member, and she was so sweet and nice, but then it's like, she's like, I have to get the assistant dean or the associate dean, because it was like, what are you guys doing here? And, and that, first, that first trip, I will say, uh, 
totally nod to Marshall, so impressed with the program that they had. And we, and we, we wanted to work with them. We wanted to see what we could do to, to, to maybe, I don't care what happens on the football field or, or any of that. What can we do as, as academic units to improve the, the services that we're providing our students? And so uh, after quite a few negotiations, uh, and, and Nicole was around for planning this one, um, we, we took Integrate to, to, to Marshall. And since that first meeting, we have, Marshall's probably our second largest pipeline. It just took us going down and saying, hey, we're not, we're not, I don't know what they thought they were, I do not know what they thought we were gonna do to this day, but it was so funny, the reaction. Um, but no, that Marshall has, our in-state recruiting, Marshall, Fairmont, uh, the list goes on. We were very successful, and even regionally, um, we, 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 I don't want to go too in the weeds on this, but we've been working a lot on undergraduate pipelines, and the IMC 510, which Stacy teaches, is the 610 course that undergraduates can take, and the idea being that if they take the course as an undergrad, as an elective, then we waive the 610 requirement as they come into IMC. It's been highly successful with WVU, because a lot of students know their senior year that they want to do it. They want to come into grad school and it gets it out of the way in the first half of the semester. But we struggled externally because West Virginia is not cheap for out-of-state students. And so, um, and because of a funny little policy rule, we can actually bring an undergraduate student from another institution in to take a 500 level course here that has to be 400 level. 500 level, there's an approval process here where you have to have a dean signature, the instructor, and you know, the registrar and, and the chef. Uh, but, uh, uh, but anyways, um, the, um, that, that is something that, that we're addressing two ways. One, we're in the process of making a 400 level version of the 610 course this fall. So it'll be in for spring of, of 20, hopefully. Uh, we also got IMC 510, 410 on academic common market. So once we get the approval of the 400 level course, non-resident students will be able to take that course at the in-state rate. So at that point, then we'll turn back to Slippery Rock and some of our other, other regional colleges to hopefully provide an opportunity for, for their students to take an elective course for a really cheap amount that they can apply to their current undergraduate degree. But when they come into the IMC program, especially with the new AOEs, they won't have to take the extra course because 610, the prerequisite will be waived. They'll be able to get a master's degree with an AOE specialization for 30 credits. So something we've been working on, it's a long answer. Yeah, Marty. So it's, the, 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 the numbers that we see, the potential for growth, and I'm really basing this on uh, what's happened with other similar programs, that there is an appetite for fully online programs that, that go into this space. A lot of fully online programs are general programs. That's, they, you know, they, they've taken their, their general business or their, and they put it online. This is a specific undergraduate degree program into an industry where we know there, are, there is recruiting, there is jobs. And so um, I, I don't wanna tell you the specific numbers, but I suspect if we're successful in all the other things that have to happen, including recruiting, we could probably estimate you know, 40 students a year in that program, which is, which is not, a bad, not a bad undergraduate degree. Of course, a lot has to happen between now and then. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for an awesome transition into the next step of our presentation. So I'll buy you a beer later. So, so 
I am going to answer that question. Um, we talk a little bit about what we've been doing, and then I'll explain a little bit more about the strategy. In answering the enrollment challenges, we've looked at new programming, and we developed and have approved now the new areas of, of emphasis and the graduate certificates. We've also reduced credit requirements, and we've finally gotten permission to do what is called market-based tuition, where we actually were able to remove our programs from the main normal, whatever you will, tuition process at the institution that has been responsible from our degree cost increasing from $26,006 in 2017 to over 30000 this year. This new, between these two things, we will have decreased the cost of our degree 16% to 24600 starting in fall of 2019, which is the cheapest it has ever been, save when it was initially on the in-state, out-of-state um, tuition. So pretty excited about that. Uh, there's a lot of scars <laughs> for this slide, but, but hopefully it, it, it works. So now we have to look at marketing. And we, f we have three things really in, in development. So I appreciate, and, and our comm team, I'm sure, appreciates the nod to the, the increased visibility on social and the things that you've been seeing. But it's all based on this inbound marketing approach. We've brought in a, um, an agency that works with our graduate admissions group. Uh, called Direct Development, and they basically helped us implement a strategy that is content first. So we come up with a lot of content, which you're seeing in social media, and that will eventually create pipelines of students, so they say. Um, we also are addressing the language issues. So uh, obviously it's, it's, it's a, it's a great challenge to get out of our own heads and into the heads of a prospective student. And it's something that I think we've done very well in some areas, but not as well as in others. So we have a project underway right now to do a full review of all of our language, IMC, DMC, and undergrad, to get us a, a, an outside perspective on, is what we're saying resonating with them? Do they care about specializations and that, or do they, do they, do they want something different? So hopefully by the end of, I'd say by the end of summer, but probably by mid-fall, uh, we should have some insight in terms of that. And all of that sort of ties together to where we're headed. Last year, really focused on re-innovation. Goal was obviously enrollment first, but, um, but in the next year, I think you guys can expect continued program development and redevelopment. The, the quality on courses is critical, that these courses that we're starting to sell aggressively and, and really promote for, that, that we, not, we not be dropping the ball in the most important time, which is when the student gets into these classes. And then, and then certainly the aggressive recruitment. And that's what we're turning all of our efforts onto. So, Cindy, to, to, your, to your point, I think I have a good, a good direction to talk now. So my support team continue to, to really focus on customer service um, and, and the standards that we set for ourselves, primarily the seven, the seven standards and essentials. But more than ever, I need the help of the faculty that teach in all of our programs. Uh, in, in, in really four key areas. And I'm gonna go through the first three really quickly because that doesn't address Cindy's question, but the fourth one does. And it actually gets you guys a chance to talk <clears throat> before I lose my voice. So the first three are the areas that we've really always focused on. Actively teaching and mentoring students, keeping course content up to, to date, and being engaged with administration. And I always like to reiterate here that I'm not asking you guys to you know, check your email every day. But, but when we ask for things, there's, there's 103 of you that, that, we, that we're needing stuff from. And, and so 
I can't stress enough how important it is for us to have a clear communication path to you so that you're getting the messages that we're sending. That's, that's the, the dashboard. I could give you numbers, but there are still folks that after multiple, multiple uh, reminders still haven't even registered in the new dash. And the old dash is gone. That's where everything sort of starts. All of your information, all of your resources, and our communications are centrally planned through that dashboard. So I, we really just need people to understand. I, we're not trying to jump on people, but, but really it's so important for us to be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish that we, that we get past the not getting emails to faculty. <clears throat> So you know, it sort of reiterates it, 250 courses by over 100 instructors. We have a process. Most of you that have taught courses know the process. You know, it's, it's pretty clear, but I wanna go through it just really quickly, just in case there are questions. So everything sort of starts with the appointment letter. The appointment letter sets the standard uh, for how classes need to be taught. It also really gives you a great idea of what we're looking for in terms of teaching effectiveness. I make course specific offers through email. We used to mail these things. We used to make individual course offers and mail them out. What a, what a great day that was. <laughs> so, so now we do it in email. It still takes a while, but, uh, but at, least, at least there's an immediate opportunity for you to ask questions and say, hey, I'm not available. Uh, because you know, if you're not available, tell me and I'll I'd rather you decline a course than take a course that you can't teach effectively. The preterm course review uh, is important primarily because while we do the building of the courses, we do you know, need a set of eyes to check these things and make sure that something hasn't, hasn't gotten messed up or you know, a calendar didn't get updated. You're, you're doing diligence there, yes. Okay, well, you should see them reflected in the course. So. But there's no feedback. I mean, all I get is that the Google order has to keep my submission, but other than that, it's just. Okay. And if I feel like there's a big disconnect between me submitting the form and the decision being made, and or there was just maybe a huge conflict, or the link was broken, you declined alternatively. Like, I just feel like there's a, a gap between. Great. Okay, great. That's something that we'll definitely have Cindy. Cindy, will you? Get, Marissa, I'd like you to talk specifically with Cindy. Let's get some feedback and see what we can improve about the process. So then we go to during the course, uh, start of the term, messaging. Obviously, we want, we want that to be smooth. We really, really, the start of term messaging is, is a strong start for, for our students to make sure they know what they need to be doing and get into those classes. Uh, the notification of inactives, as you know, um, sometimes students will register for a course and maybe forget, or they will just blow it off for the first week because that's intro week or syllabus week. Uh, and we need to know so that we can reach out to them and either get them active or get them out before they wind up damaging their grade point average. Uh, and some of them really forget. They, they, they register and then they just, they just, I don't know, they're students. Fascinating. Um, late work policy, we really want to reiterate this. This is an area that continues to be a, a pain point for faculty. You know, the, the, the lack of, I guess, student acceptance that late work is a problem for everybody. Uh, so we want you to reiterate that late work is not accepted. Of course, it's your discretion. If you have a student that has an emergency, you know, you all make those, those calls, but as a general matter of policy, it should be consistent that late work is not accepted. Midterm grades are new, or for, for those of you that teach full semester undergraduate courses now mandated by the institution. Uh, accelerated courses, still they haven't figured that out yet um, because parts of term are different. And so only the full-time undergraduate courses require the midterm grades, but they are required for every student not just the D's and F's. 
It used to be just Ds and Fs. SCI messaging, um, you know, we can ask them. It's like, uh, you know, it's like, it's like talking in an in a empty room. But we really want them to understand that SEIs are their voice. It's their opportunity to tell us about their experience in a way that we can do something to fix. I, I, there's, a, there's a resistance there sometimes. Students think that we're going to take their feedback and, and then they're going to fail the class. And I mean, it's, it's, it's wild stuff. We want you all to just assure them that this helps everyone. It helps you become better instructors. It helps the program identify areas in the courses that, that can be improved. And, and, and really, you know, students like feedback when it's on their terms. Yes. Was any of it really critical? Interesting feedback. Yeah, I, I think that I think that this is a this is an area that the university is also exploring how to improve participation in, in SEIs, uh, and 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 it's obviously always going to be imperfect because at WVU we cannot either incentivize or force. So some institutions will hold grades until they complete the evaluations. We we are we are not allowed to do that. <laughs> so which is probably good, uh, but. But we would rather have more participation, and I think that we have an opportunity to continue to stress to students how this is going to be used and how it's not going to be used. It's not going to be viewed by anybody until, until after. And actually, the only way, literally the only way that they can identify a particular student to anyone is if the student makes a physical threat. And that's, at that point, apparently there's a whole other thing that happens. It's a great question. It's, I'm, I, I think that, that, so we do have some control of the questions. We do keep it standardized because of, across different courses in the program, we want, we want the same sort of response. But I think that if there is an, ex, an opportunity for us to explore how the questions are being asked, some of it's provided, it's not, it's not negotiable, uh, which is why for years we had a, does your instructor speak clearly question for those that have, and that one is because it was formulaic. Every course at WVU had that question. And I think we now have gotten an online version. So we're heading in the right direction. But, but ESCIs are continuing to be a, a challenge because we're not always getting the feedback from the students that we need to improve instructional practices and content. And so whatever you all can do to help us get that message out, if you're building relationships with your students in the class and they trust you, as an instructor, they're more likely to respond than they are to a, ma a message sent from, from some WVU administrator box. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, did I finish? Oh, yeah. And end of term messaging, uh, you know, it's the same every time. It's got to close all these things out. Final grades, there are three, three steps to the process notification via email to the students, as well as in the, in the, in the homework uh, Dropbox. This is important, actually, so that they know that it's available for them. There is a, um, a couple of things that they, they need. It's sort of timers start when final grades are submitted, uh, including final grade appeal processes and things like that. So we want to make sure the students know uh, when, when they, can, they can go in and see that. We also need to know when you all um, submit your the, 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 the final grades have to be submitted to STAR, and then we need to know that you all submitted them. Uh, at any given time, we're trying to close out probably between 60 and 80 sections. And, and the only way for us to do that, 
without your notification is to go into each and every section to see if the grades are submitted and that all the grades are submitted. So if you're working and you've submitted a few, but you've got a couple that you're just still crunching or working on, we don't know if you're done or not. So unless you send us that email, we can basically check you off the list. So it's important. Uh, court, post term course content feedback. Uh, this is where you tell us what didn't work or what could be improved about the course, uh, particularly so that we have a chance to make the modification before the course runs again. So this is an area also that I think we can improve the process and what we're doing. And I think you can expect to see some, but we'd like your feedback on that as well. And then uh, for those that have a challenge in, in one, of the ESEI or one of the SEI categories, uh, we'll schedule a development call uh, these, are, these are really t for us to understand what happened and what we can do to better support you and help you improve your instructional practice. They're very, they're very developmental, not something to be worried about. But we want everyone to improve their teaching performance. We will continue to monitor things, the things that we always have. Expectation setting is always the one that seems to bite us uh, in this is what leads to great appeals, and now that the instructor didn't tell me what they wanted, and they gave me this grade, and use these, 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 um, these threads. Uh, it will help everyone, including the students, know what to expect. The discussion board engagement, um, again, 10 posts, it's been that way for, for a while. Active and active notifications, responsiveness, and then the SCI data. So there are really four well, there are several keys to great in-course instructor performance. Um, you all know this clarity of your expectation setting, quality of your discussion board engagement, timeliness and detail of your grading and feedback, and responsiveness to your course and students. And we're adding another one, which is more industry content brought into the class. There's stuff happening all the time. And Sometimes I think we, 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 we don't always bring the current topics directly into the courses. The discussion boards are a great place for you to say, did you all see what just happened last week? And bring that in, make it current for them. Uh, there's two things that I want you to know about. One, we have an ANA membership, uh, um, Association of National Advertisers. If you go on the dashboard, there's information on how to create your membership. Uh, there is so much information in there that you could spend all of your time just reading what they put out. You can ask them questions. You can go to live events in your area. You can be on committees. The list goes on and on. Take advantage of that resource because it is not cheap, but it's super incredibly relevant content for what we're doing. And so I encourage you all to, to, to check that out. Yeah, Phil. I've been in A and A for a couple of years, and sometimes an article is a premium quality. They block the article. So what are students? If I post a hyperlink, can the students open all the A and A articles? Matthew, do you know? We, we can, we'll, we'll search down that answer. We'll have a little bit better answer for you. So could you, next time you see one, could you send it to me so I know? All right. Uh, and then the other thing is our, our podcast, uh, which has gone to a weekly, has had some amazing guests so far, and continues to really impress us. I, I think this is so cool. So I want you all to, to just pay attention. We're... we're I, I, this is definitely something you can bring into the class. Um, grab it, stick it in there. We, we have you know, blog posts about it. And, but this is something that I'd like you all, all instructors, to just be aware that's happening. And pay attention, because the, the, the topics rotate. Uh, and, and if there's a particular idea that you have, a, a, a guest that you'd recommend, uh, let us know. We, we would love to have. Um, I'm, we've had several great referrals as well, and so just keep that up, but just know that it's there. 
And then, of course, the faculty dashboard has all the information that, it, that you come to expect uh, in there. If there's things that are missing, let us know. We will, we will get them added. Um, but this really serves the, as your sort of first step. If you have a question, you need, you know, you need a, a quick answer to something or look for you know, you know, some piece of information, go here first. The students have one as well, by the way, at least in the IMC and DMC program. Uh, undergrad, they don't, but we have uh, Aaron to, to, to work with them. Um, but just again, I want to reiterate that I send messaging through this dashboard, and that's, that's our primary, that's where we want to have a conversation. So we can have the conversation here, but for the rest of the year, if you have a question, you have an idea, a thought, or a response, post it in there. I'd love to have more faculty engagement with each other. All right, finally, Cindy, I finally get to your question. So, so the fourth role moving into the new year, and this is really a conversation uh, that I want to that I want to have. Um, we need your assistance in marketing and recruitment efforts, and and really specifically, I'll explain it like this. So, when students are looking at programs, one of the, th the things that they look at after they they look at cost and and some of those things is the faculty. They want to know who they're going to have class with. And we have done an imperfect or an inconsistent job doing that. I want our new strategy to be focused on you all. Your expertise, your experience, and I, I need your help to do that. So before I go on, what are some of the ideas that you have just offhand of how you can support our marketing and recruitment efforts for all of our online programs, grad and undergrad? Great. I'm going to lose control of this. Hold on just a second. All right. Can, can we also, so everyone can hear, can we grab the, the audience mics? Sorry, Winnie. Just give us a second. <laughs> so Archie's comment was, um, or Archie's recommendation was to utilize instructors uh, with prospective students who had questions. And Susan's was that at Fair State, uh, students with specific questions and key content areas come directly to you. They, is it via email? that's another way because it's not through you guys so you, they don't think you're filtering it it's direct little they know we don't filter anything I, yeah but they don't know that <laughs> any other thoughts my wow. <laughs> my thought is really most relevant to the people who teach the campaigns course the 636 so in the course I just completed, you know, I have about three or four who are really big fans, and some of them send you LinkedIn or Facebook or some other kind of communication, and some of them, of course, would like to never, ever hear your name again. But um, I think we have an opportunity with these recent graduates to have them be really ambassadors, especially the ones um, who want to have suggestions that want to help us change the course and make it better. So I don't know if, if, if we can have a program for involving them to, to help. Out of the 636, the two or three or four from each class that are really enthusiastic to get them as some kind of an advisory group or something. Great. Leo? 
Okay, all right. <laughs> I think maybe after Integrate last year, we submitted videos to you, or at some point in the past year, we submitted videos that made me think. Um, I've had several students reach out via Facebook Messenger to me, and what about like using Facebook Live and assigning dates and times for, for faculty to, because we can pop on from our homes and, and do things like that, um, as well as highlights. I see a lot of that in content marketing, like highlighting certain things, because in this room, I now, because of that, feel more connected to the instructors here, because I know a little bit about them, so I can only imagine what the students would feel with some highlighting, just like where you're from and undergrad and, and those kinds of connections being made. Thank you. Uh, actually having the students promote themselves, what they're already doing in their work, kind of like influencer marketing in that perspective, has worked really well. So for instance, I'll go ahead and highlight something that a student is doing or something that I taught and I actually tag a student on there and they're gonna be more likely to share it. And because they're in that age range, right, there's gonna be other people following them and then it's gonna have that residual effect. So if we could promote them and have them promote the program and what the work they're doing, because the work actually shows, right, based on what they're learning in class. I think that's probably the very best way instead of us saying it. Just to, maybe we could leverage the podcast or the student profiles based on recommendations from the teachers. Mm -hmm. One idea that I was thinking too that we could do as instructors is we're all coming in from different areas of specialization like social media, PR, and maybe look at new partnerships that we can come up with. I know that I've done a lot of integration with social media in my PR class, so what I've been trying to do is go directly to the platforms and say, is there a way for us to work together? So I know Facebook, for example, is revamping their blueprint certification, and they're actually looking at pilot programs to test that. So if we were able to formulate these new partnerships that have yet been untapped by most of the other graduate programs, that could be beneficial for us too. That actually ties into my thought also. I was thinking that it would be great to have three or four faculty people who had related but dissimilar functions to get together and have almost a panel discussion. And it wouldn't even necessarily have to be on specific topics in the course. It could be something that's current and relevant. Uh, you know, I've done that in the past. Um. <clears throat> I've attended a number of events over in Washington um, at the press club. Um, I think one time the high school journalists were um, meeting at a big hotel for a conference and so you guys had a booth. Um, our experience with these booths has not been great. People are there and well intended but it, they just pass by the booth. But last year, I want to just re re remind you, and, and Emily maybe, um, last year you weighed whether or not to participate in the Capitol Hill Graduate School Day they had. And you, it looked like a lot of money, and you guys didn't do it. Um, but I sent over one of our graduates from WVU into the room to act like he was scouting out graduate programs, and he goes, you guys have got to do this. <laughs> he said it was packed, um, there were a lot of people, and they were taking materials. He said it looked really good. Um, so Amber's gone, maybe Emily wants to pick that up and we want to look at that. Um, Washington, D.C. is our, one of our hotbeds of WVU alumni and it's also a great area for young people who are looking to better themselves. And they're, they're, they're just, I, I meet with a ton of young people and they are just saying, how do I stand out in my firm? How do I get that promotion? How can I land that job? The master's program is a requirement now for many of the top level positions. Um, they wanna stay there, they like it. They're looking for programs. We have a lot of competition in Washington too, but we still, need to tap that. It's too many people. And you have a lot of IMC alums over there too. One thing I've been exploring for the last couple months um, from a recruitment standpoint <clears throat> that might make sense for this program particularly 
is enabling people to, uh, instead of inquiring through the website or filling out a card, but actually texting to uh, provide information that way. And then once they do that, uh, to do content marketing through text messaging, to have faculty provide updates or, hey, this is what I just taught in class, or provide links. Um, I've noticed that um, the newspaper uh, in Cleveland, actually, they are now, instead of having um, their, their top uh, reporters or writers do blog posts or things like that, or even focus so much on, on writing for a physical paper that's, that's not even being handed out that often, uh, are now texting daily uh, updates from, I was just out of the Cleveland Indians locker room and saw this happen and this happen and they do it. You'll get one at two o'clock in the morning, you'll get one at eight o'clock in the morning from six, seven different reporters, but you have to opt into it and you can reply back to them and ask questions and they can respond to you. Now, it's not their personal number. They're using some sort of system, obviously, but it, it, it does um, provide some content uh, some personalization in a way that it can be interactive and that they also then know a lot about me because I had to provide some information to have access to that. Um, from, I think one of the best resources that IMC has are the people that are in this room right now. There are a lot of talented people here. We are experts in our field. We network and we are presenting at conferences. Um, and so we are one of the best resources. So I would encourage everyone in this room to add that you are per, that you are an instructor in this program to your Twitter bio, to your LinkedIn page, to your signature, to talk about it at networking events. Because I know that people I have talked to at networking events have then gone and applied and have gone through this program because I talk about it. Um, and so that's the thing. It's not going to be the best kept secret if, if we have to talk about it. And, we, and if, they, if we're sitting on a panel and people, and we're a bunch of influencers in this room, that influence is going to carry over. Um, because people in this room are what people want. They want the expertise that we have to offer through this program. And so if we don't talk about it, no one else is. Um, and especially, I agree with Mike, especially in DC, um, you know, these are the type of programs that are in demand in DC and sadly, they're not being offered by AU. They're not being offered by Georgetown or GW. And so that's our, I mean, I just feel like I go to a million networking events and it's part of my bio um, that I am an instructor uh, at West Virginia. Um, and I'm proud of it and I like to tell people about it. So that's, the, I think that's one of the hooks is that if people, if we're at events and we're influencing others, we need to use that influence to leverage this program. You guys are great. So I kind of have a second question, which is almost identical in two slides, because I kind of figured that would be like pulling Chad, teeth. Chad, can I just ask? Absolutely, you, Susan. Just, can you tell us a little bit about who your target customer is for the undergraduate online program? I mean, it's not going to be the same person that no. goes to football games and it's, so on. It's, it it's help, adult help, learners. It would help us to help you if we knew more who that person is, I think. Yeah, I, it's, that, that is still in development, but what I would say is that the expectation is that we wouldn't be recruiting a traditional freshman. It would be uh, someone that's already out working, needs the credential, can't go back to, or doesn't want to go back to a traditional college experience. Uh, but with the, um, you know, with our practitioner focus, it really is, it is, I'm hoping that we'll be able to recruit an adult audience who's already affiliated with the industry. Yes, that is. So how many professors are teaching for another university? OK, so we did this sort of informally. It's not all, I wouldn't say it's working perfectly yet, but um, we talked about, as a professor, identifying students in your classes that do want to go to graduate school and then try to introduce them to the program. At Ohio University, we don't have a competitive program, so I can do that kind of thing. So we had um, a couple students in my classes that were interested. One of them ended up deciding they wanted to get their MBA, and the other one wanted to work. So I was able to flag a couple people that were interested, and that's actually a good way to find students. If you're teaching a class, um, now that we've started this informally, 
I'm going to have new advisees in. So I'm going to be sitting down and talking to them and what their goals are for the future. And I can start to plant that seed um, as they look at their, um, their goals for education in the future. So that's one way of doing it. The other one we tried to get happen, um, we tried to get going, but I don't know if it ever came, came to light, but having someone from WVU come to Ohio University and talk to our student groups. Um, PRSSA is big at our school, and um, that was one of the things that we were talking about. And I don't think that happened because of some conference issues and things. But if you're teaching at a university and you're interacting with students, it's a perfect time to tell them about this program. So that's my thought. Anyway. I was just curious, and maybe you already do this, but um, going off of what Mike said about regional hotbeds of alums, if we can identify those, are, are you doing any kind of alumni, like specific to IMC, alumni gatherings? I know at, at Lindsley at our school, um, we can identify different cities and we'll, our alumni and development office will travel there. Um, and it, to some degree, has helped our admissions recruiting if there's a son or a daughter or a grandchild who wants to send their, their kid there. Um, if you get these groups of alumni together, maybe, possibly, and they bring other interested professionals. How to leverage an alumni group of 1,395 people is, is certainly an opportunity that we, we have to figure out. But I'd like to take that offline with you a little bit too because I'm running out of time. So all of a sudden, I felt like I had all this time. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Kristen. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna just add to Craig, because indirectly, I've done this when I am asked to speak um, at high school sometimes and at colleges, and would be more than welcome to drive the 45 minutes from my house to speak to a class at OU about the program. Um, I think we're starting even younger. I helped a couple years ago launch a digital marketing program for high school students. And those students, when they talk to me at the end, they're like, well, what did you do? Like, how did you get here? And when you tell them, you know, well, where's that? And then you send them the link. I mean, I already have like a list of three or four people that I work with that I'm so excited about the IMC undergrad because I've been saying to them for years, there needs to be someone develop an IMC undergrad because that's what you really need. I had four marketing classes with my undergrad degree, four. To teach me anything, this program did, so. Great, thank you. So here's how I'm gonna shift gears. I've got two slides, a couple of ideas that we had and, and specific asks that, that we want you to be aware that we're gonna be making. And then I'd like to basically invite your feedback uh, throughout the rest of, of, of Integrate. So, um, so again, critical to our strategy. The first step is really we wanna wrangle the bio pages into a consistent and updated and exciting format. And so I wanna, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be taking this up, um, up after Integrate, but I really want you to be thinking about your bio page and, and how students, a student there wants to know who you are. They don't care as much about, you know, some of the, the, the more academic. They wanna know why you're the best instructor of that course. So, so let's figure out how to make these bio pages resonate with prospective students, because they do look at them. Also, for the inbound marketing approach, we have a, a need for constant content. So uh, we'd like to highlight you all a lot more, understanding that there's not a one size fit all, not everybody has uh, the, the inclination or the ability to do everything, but we want to have an in increased level of faculty content provided to us so that we can build this program based on you all. And so we do want to add and amend the, the appointment letter. It's something that we will talk about uh, in the summer, but between now and then, I'm inviting feedback for the kinds of things that you are, are interested and comfortable doing. You are our thought leaders and we need your help to both determine strategy and then to fill that content flow that we need to, to have. So um, we have some index cards. If you think of anything, Cindy, 
uh, why don't we just uh, put them up on the countertop over there? If you have any thoughts, just write it down, slide it under one of our office doors. Um, any, any suggestion is welcome. If you all think it would be helpful, I can put together a form that you guys could submit you know, anonymously if you have that kind of feedback. You know, hopefully we're not, we're not unapproachable, but I understand that sometimes you, know, you don't wanna say something, you know, I don't know. Also, quickly, so I'm gonna take one minute. I wanna just review a little bit of the stuff that's happening at Integrate for faculty and remind you all in case uh, you, you don't remember, you didn't get that agenda. Uh, so we have a faculty workshop coming up here shortly. Welcome Mixer this evening at the Hilton Garden Inn. Tomorrow morning, uh, I invite everyone to attend the program primers. If you are not uh, the, uh, lead, in the lead instructor meeting, basically, uh, and, and so the leads that are listed there, uh, we, we wanna just talk with you all again. Uh, and then the resume reviewers, uh, we, we had limited space and, and thank you all, everyone was so kind. I've got a, a handout uh, for those. I put it on the dashboard, but I also want you to know how we're gonna handle that essentially. The resume reviewers tomorrow during the career workshop will be in the two rooms and here. And we're just gonna identify you all with placards, with, with number cards, and direct the students to the numbers. So, and we have a little p uh, page with your information. <clears throat> if um, you are unable to be there, let me know so that we can swap you out for someone else. So I just wanted to do that quickly today. And then 621 tomorrow, the AOE topics. Uh, I, I highly encourage you all to participate in that. I think it's gonna be really exciting. We are also gonna do a lead instructor meeting with the single course instructors uh, at, at noon tomorrow during those meetings. And then I really hope you all will attend, if you're available, the pinning ceremony in the Alexia Benitez uh, Instructor Teaching Award. That'll be tomorrow at six, right before our keynote. And uh, yeah, I think, thank you. One last ask while I have you. So in the front, there's a map and a bunch of pins on the outside, like in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. If you, at this break or whenever you have a chance, go take a pin and put where you're from. Uh, I think that it will be exciting as we have students and graduates coming to see where everyone is from. So we have 20 minutes for a break and uh, I thank you for your attention.